hi welcome back to my weekly tip video which is uh, being done on a Tuesday 12 noon each week uh, UK time and I've had a question from a Brenda Parry who is a very keen enthusiastic tennis player from I think originally from the UK but now lives and plays in France uh, it's quite a long list so I'm going to refer to it but essentially uh, Brenda wanted to know how to deal with people who essentially make life a little bit more difficult for you on the other side of the court. Some people would call them cheats, some people would call it gamesmanship and so on, but that's the essence of it. So Brenda, I'm not going to address this as if it's to you, I'm going to address it as if it's to everyone else. So if you're a tennis player and you have experienced this, uh, this would be my advice to you. So this is the, the list. So somebody who's being awkward so number one starts to contest points and sometimes refuses to replay the point so tip number one is you don't replay points you, there's a decision the decision is made uh, and that's it there's none there, there's no such thing as a replay if you're disputing something uh, you can have replays if a ball crosses the court and interferes with play but if you're debating something there is no replay because otherwise the matches would go on forever. So that's my top tip. There is no replay. Second one is announces the wrong score. That's an impossibility because that is one of the things that is completely within your control. So if you, a lot of people use that expression, control the controllables. For me, it's common sense. Uh, if you call the score out every single point, is it impossible for your opponent to call out the wrong, the wrong score? So keep the score, because if you don't keep the score, I would argue you don't actually fully appreciate or value what each point means, either that point you played, the point before, or the point after. Every point in tennis is equally as important, so you, not, you must know what the score is. Therefore, before the point begins, I think both players should call it out, but normally it's the server's responsibility. But if I'm returning, I call it out as well. So you never, ever have a moment where the wrong score gets called out because both of you call it out every game. Um, doesn't excuse herself when she wins a point on a net, I'm guessing a net cord, right? Who cares? That Again, that might sound uh, a little bit harsh, but it's just etiquette and etiquette is not rules, uh, it's just manners. And if somebody doesn't have the manners to say sorry when they hit a dead net cord, at the end of the day, it makes zero difference at all. It's only how you process that that can make the difference. So just let it go. It doesn't make a difference. Start, starts to mimic my come on cries. Uh, so you, we've all seen that. So you kind of go, come on. And then somebody else goes, come on. Uh, and they kind of uh, mirror what you do. Again, it doesn't make any difference. If they are so desperate down the other end of the court that they resort to playing those types of mind games, then you are in control because that is 100% desperate behavior. So just let it go, internally smile. You might even externally smile to get under their skin even more. A few less distracting examples. Uh, oh, so that's all stuff about leaving the court at change of ends uh, or when they're not meant to uh, leave the court. Again, that's just rules. You just have to apply them. So if somebody is leaving the court and they're in the middle of a match and they're not meant to uh, to do it at that time, so you meant you can go for a toilet break at the end of a set. Uh, so if they're leaving the court before then, you just need to speak to them and kind of make sure that they understand the rules. Sometimes people do things and they don't actually understand the rules. Uh, so it's really important that uh, you just keep it logical, keep it rational and maybe explain it. Uh, of course, if somebody's going to wet themselves, you have to let them go to the toilet. But if they're going to refill their water bottle, there's a time and a place. So just educate them on uh, what their actual rules are. Um, so, yeah, essentially that's about it. But the, the most common one is what you do when somebody cheats. Uh, and my top tip is very simply, number one, everything you do or think should be to diffuse your own mind. Uh, to play it down, become less stressed. Uh, and if you are in a position where you're letting things that are out with your control get under your skin 
and affect your mindset and your thought process, then they have achieved what it is they're either trying to achieve or in most cases, they're completely oblivious to it. So if you have someone calling a ball out when you uh, believe it was in, it would actually be quite good for you if you accept that it is their call and there's every chance that you could be wrong. Because if you look at the top end of the, the game, Hawkeye Challenge, I think it's about 30-something percent that the players get right. Of course, there's some challenges they just throw because they want to waste time. But in a lot of cases, the players with the sharpest eyes in the game are questioning calls using Hawkeye, and they're actually wrong. So don't assume that you're being cheated. Just take it that there's going to be some close calls, uh, and some are going to go your way, some are not, because there's a lot of times, especially in junior tennis, where players play the ball on when the ball was actually out. So you've, it, it tends to even itself out. And even if it doesn't, you don't gain anything by believing you're being cheated. You just need to let it go. So the other thing uh, you can do to kind of gain control is just the way that you dispute the call. It could just be as simple as walking to the net, uh, asking if they're sure, uh, asking them to point to the mark or asking them how far out it was. Just kind of make it pretty clear that you maybe uh, didn't agree, but don't make a big thing of it because you need to keep your own emotions in check. So ultimately, I suppose what I'm saying is focus on the controllables. Uh, don't let things get under your skin because at the end of the game, at the end of the day, it is just a game that you're playing. It's not a personal thing. Don't take it personal and don't make it personal. So I hope that helps. Uh, and uh, if you've got any other questions, Please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and write below uh, any questions that you would like to be answered next week. Okay, until then, bye-bye.